Hello friends, welcome to the Thomas Merton Center Lost and Found Pop-Up Museum. We're so uh, excited to show you a sneak preview of the museum um, and do a little virtual tour with you around the space so that you can see some of the art that's on display and some of the, the interactive exhibits we have for you. Um, we hope that you'll join us in person this Friday and Saturday, uh, December 3rd and 4th. But if you can't, we hope, we're glad you're joining us now to see what there is to offer. And we hope you'll go to our online auction as well um, at thomasmartincenter.org 2021. And you can buy tickets there. You can bid on items on the auction site and um, we are here to raise money for the Thomas Merton Center and we will be also debuting at the event this weekend our new mission values statement which we've been working on all year long through our strategic planning process um, and it's been a lot of labor of love trying to understand not just what we think the Thomas Merton Center is but what the community really needs from us. So um, we look forward to sharing that with you. Um, and we um, thank all of the members who participated in that process. And we, before we start looking at all the beautiful art on display, I'd love to introduce you to Crystal, the TMC community organizer, to tell us a little bit about what we're raising money for today. Hey everyone, so I'm here today to talk to you about the Thomas Merton Center, Pittsburgh's Peace and Social Justice Center since 1972. That is nearly 50 years and um, since our inception we have been an anti-war organization fighting nuclear um, weapons um, and war uh, not just here but all across the world. And um, more recently we have also been involved in fighting fracking within the city limits. Um, keeping our water public. Um, we are really proud to work with our partners at Casa San Jose with the Bring Home Martin campaign and we are incredibly grateful for a successful campaign um, it, with the Don't Criminalize Transit Riders so keeping essentially police officers off of the, the trains and the buses here in Pittsburgh. So some of the things that we currently work on um, just well, one of the one of our institutions that we've had um, since the '90s is the um, the East Community East End Thrift, um, lovingly known as Thrifty. It is serves as a community center for Garfield residents here in Pittsburgh. Um, we, the Thomas Merton Center, provide thousands of dollars of vouchers to a variety of different homeless and women's shelters here in, in Pittsburgh, um, where where folks can come in and get for free uh, clothing, housewares, children's toys, and often um, can find free food as well. So Thrifty is an important part of the Thomas Merton Center um, and again a, an important part of the community here in Pittsburgh. Um, but the three campaigns that we spend most of our time on um, uh, uh, we are incredibly proud to be working on them. Um, they're, co they're coalition based work. Um, we're incredibly happy uh, every year to be able to work in coalitions with a variety of organizations. Um, the first one is the Driving PA Forward Coalition. That is a statewide campaign um, of, uh, in coalition of a couple dozen organizations working to fight for unmarked driver's licenses for undocumented immigrants. The Driving PA Forward campaign um, believes strongly that mobility is a human right and we want to fight for the dignity of immigrants regardless of their immigration status to drive without fear from church to home to school to doctors. Um, the second campaign we work on is the Pennsylvania PA Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. So the Poor People's Campaign, um, we refer to ourselves as an organism. Um, we are more than simply a coalition. It is a movement that is working across not just Pennsylvania, but across the country. And we are fighting the interlocking evils of poverty, 
racism, ecological devastation, militarism, and the distorted moral narrative of Christian nationalism. So what we want folks to um, save the date for and keep on, on their calendars is uh, on June 18, 2022, we're going to be doing a mass poor and low income workers assembly in Washington, DC. So get on the bus with us to DC on June 18, 2022. And the last of our campaigns is our most ambitious one, um, known, known as the Drop Colcom campaign. We are fighting um, a greenwashing um, locally based foundation, the Colcom Foundation. Every year, the Colcom Foundation gives away millions of dollars to anti-immigrant political organizations, some of which are actually listed as hate groups by the Southern Poverty Law Center. So we're working to cut off this funding to this anti-immigrant um, uh, political network of um, organizations. And um, we believe strongly that the Qualcomm Foundation has the ability to change its ways and instead of uh, greenwashing its, its image, can actually um, divert its money to the uh, environmental justice organization that it currently uh, funds again to serve as a facade to their anti-immigrant spending. So those are the campaigns that we are working on and the reason why we're inviting you all to come to this art gallery. Come and stand under this giant phoenix with us and make bids online. So you don't have to be here in person, but you totally can be here in person. Um, please wear a mask and thank you so much for joining us on this digital tour. This altar was submitted by Pittsburgh Graffiti, and it is a collection of graffiti photos taken in Pittsburgh. The graffiti is all in memory of people we've lost, both locally and nationally, some to drugs, some to police violence, some to other causes. The collection is meant to be in honor of their lives and memories, and we are grateful to share this altar space here at the Lost and Found Pop-Up Museum. The first paintings you'll see when you walk in are from John Ivory, specially made for this exhibit. And these are probably the most poignant um, pieces in the gallery. And they really demonstrate the frustration of living uh, as a black man in America and the legacy of evil in America and how that history has changed and yet remained the same through the years and just the absolute skull shattering frustration of holding all of that with you every day, living as a person of color in this country. Uh, so we're very grateful to John for creating these pieces for us. This next piece is by Kirsten Irvin, entitled Blue Train. It's an incredibly emotional piece, um, a very intricate one. Uh, it is um, wool strips, hand tufted yarns on a monk's cloth, and it is a response to the Syrian refugee crisis of people fleeing to Europe. The next thing you'll see here are these this letter, this handwritten letter from the 70s, and this is a bit of a lighter installation. Um, it's a very humorous letter about a man uh, enlisting in the army and then immediately regretting that decision and uh, sharing his uh, tales of extensive LSD usage in order to get out of service. The next pieces you will see are from the Peace Paper Project and a Revolutionary Press. These are letterpress handmade paper um, 
there are uh, there's a poem from Thomas Merton printed on these, and some different phrases like "You can no more win a war than you can win an earthquake." Um, the really neat thing about these um, this handmade paper is that they're made from old refugee uh, uniforms or military uniforms, and even old "Make America Great Again" T-shirts. We have a couple of auction pieces here from Jennifer Kong uh, that really bring out, for me at least, a feeling of isolation in a crowded place, the lack of connectedness that we tend to feel around strangers. Um, and the next piece is called Exit Strategy, and that is and Andrew Allison acrylic on stretched canvas. And Allison is from Pittsburgh, but um, has shown nationally. And he considers to what extent our obligation is to connect, not only with ourselves, but with all entities around us. Um, and examining how our environments, traumas, objects shape our understanding and need for symbolic forms and spirituality. Uh, so this is a really incredible piece for auction uh, that we hope you'll check out on the website. So this print was submitted by Jay Malls, um, and they're a great friend of the Thomas Merton Center and the director of Repair the World, which is a very powerful organization um, here in Pittsburgh and nationally. Um, and they've shown artwork uh, all over the country um, and across the street at Boom Concepts as well. So we're very, very grateful uh, to them for uh, submitting this Peace. Next we have a painting from Moshe um, entitled Let Our People Go. Um, Moshe believes the imagination is one of the most powerful forces in the universe and he uses creative focus for healing and visual art creation. And this piece um, invokes a lot of our different movements um, from the Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, and Abolish ICE. Next, we have some really functional pieces. They're entitled Sex Pots um, by Don Regier. Um, these are uh, great to have to gift um, because they are dishwasher safe and microwave safe. And you'll also see on these this table a few pieces that are not part of the auction, not for sale, um, but are some incredible mixed media um, uh, using repurposed items um, to create these beautiful bird cages. Um, these are Melanie Marshall's work, as well as this book on the table uh, that says, what war are we preparing for? So, we hope that you'll come down and check out this book. It is truly a moving piece of work. Um, the first page asks against our neighbors and has the tree of life coming from the Pittsburgh skyline and a tag uh, with the names of the victims of the October 27th massacre. The next page asks against our children and remembers some of the major school shootings among many, including Sandy Hook, Columbine, and Stoneman, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. This page asks against our sisters and brothers and acknowledges the memories of so many who lost their lives to police violence, hate crimes, um, including the Las Vegas shooting, and the Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, so many lives lost to gun violence and hate. Um, the final page gives us a hopeful message and we hope that uh, you'll come by and check out this beautiful work. Um, again, these pieces are not for auction, uh, so you'll just have to see them in person. We also have a book of poetry from Alex Rainey 
that you can read some poems with references to Pittsburgh and really moving stuff. So take some time to look at that when you come by this weekend. We also have a really powerful piece by Social Living. It's entitled Surveillance on Duty at All Times, really showcasing the, how we are under um, watch at all times um, in person and online. This next piece we have uh, from Social Living again is entitled American Crisis, which highlights a lot of the different American um, evils and themes that we suffer through, uh, militarism and racism and capitalism. So this is a great piece to come to see in person because it's so detailed in its collage. Um, so we hope you'll come by and see that. And what's really special is that in addition to these two beautiful auction pieces, Social Living is offering a custom commissioned artwork um, for anyone at three different price tiers. You can get different sizing and you get to choose the subject matter. A lot of Darren's work is very uh, comical, humorous, uses a lot of re retro imagery. Um, in addition to some of the more serious work like this American crisis. Um, so we hope that you will uh, make a bid for a custom piece. It would be a great gift to someone who, you know, really um, has a powerful statement um, that they want to share. And the uh, next thing we want to show you is this beautiful Beehive Collective banner. Beehive Collective has been working for years to create these incredibly intricate symbolic works of art and they have allowed us to display several of their works and we will also have some Beehive Collective posters for sale um, at registration at the event this weekend. So we will make sure that you get home with one of these beautiful posters in a much smaller size. Okay, so here we have four more paintings from John Ivory and uh, John created these uh, as a form of divination to represent tarot cards. And we should mention that John is actually one of the main curators of this museum. Uh, we're very, very grateful for contributing these beautiful pieces of art, um, as well as creating this beautiful space to display work from many artists. And he's actually here with us to tell us a little bit more about these pieces. Uh, so these pieces are created with intention and purpose, um, and they speak to me personally, uh, but I found that they can also speak to other people. That's why they are up here for your pleasure, and hopefully one speaks to you and you will take it home. Thank you, John. So now we can come around here. This next painting is by Zim Saeed, entitled The Entonement of Christ. It's a really powerful painting um, by Zim Saeed, who is an artist and painter and filmmaker based in Pittsburgh. And he, he believes that um, through his work is credited by his upbringing as a Bangladeshi American as a main source of his inspiration. And next we have a piece here from Christine Lorenz. It's a photograph entitled Salt 5795. Um, it's a beautiful piece of an enlarged cr uh, crystal of salt. Um, that's really beautiful to see um, just how intricate um, a small, just a small thing as, as a speck of salt can be. 
Above that, you'll see another piece from Sydney Feet uh, called Somewhere New. And next to it is this beautiful painting from Ezekiel Reyes. And Ezekiel is a water protector in Ojai, California, who um, specializes in organite healing tools, but wanted to share this beautiful piece that uh, they titled Cosmic Rainbow Download and is based on real life experiences. Um, and then above us, we have this beautiful two-sided painting, again, from Sydney Yafit. And there is some cosmos on one side, but if you check out the other side, you'll see the class of COVID-19 imagery. So um, I hope that you'll bid on this piece and find a cool way to display both um, of those images in your home. Okay, here you'll see 12 beautiful poems and compositions written in English and Japanese, written by the children who were victims of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings. Um, we encourage you to check out these posters submitted by Mariana Barkas. Um, these are not for auction, so you will have to see them in person to get the full effect of these beautiful illustrations and poetry. Next, we have a few works from the Creative Citizen Studio. And we are so grateful uh, to their cohort to uh, submit several pieces from several artists. The Creative Citizen Studio is a Pittsburgh-based studio working with artists with intellectual and de developmental disabilities. Um, they assist them in classes and making, exhibiting, and selling their work. So we really hope that you will um, take one of these home. Uh, the first one you'll see is from Jemmy Johnson, and it's called Disco Dancers. Um, Jamie is from the east end of Pittsburgh and loves exploring what our dreams and imaginations are made of. Um, across from that is a piece from Katie Dement called Give a Gal a Gun. And these are really cute uh, handmade paper photos um, and found materials. And you can see these old timey photos uh, with them holding guns. We next have a piece by Deja Massey entitled Moon and Stars. Deja Massey is a master of pattern, contour line, and organization. Um, this piece itself is a great interpretation of moon and stars uh, and has beautiful color. And next to that would be um, a piece by Robin McKee entitled Rock and Robin. It's a really fun piece um, and it says she rocks in the treetops. These two paintings are by Dave Vital, and the top one is called Women's March, and the bottom is Pride and Joy. And you can certainly feel up close or from a distance just the absolute joy and emotion coming from this beautiful painting. Um, so thank you to Dave for submitting these. This next piece is by Robert Crum. It's from, it's a Robert Crum drawing from 1992. It's a 15 panel short history of America. Um, it's, a, it's an interpretation of what America has been um, and where it's come and leaves with the question of where we will go next. 
below that we have a painting from Aparita, Aparajita Verma um, entitled Ever Essence. It's, uh, she tried to personify this very attribute of effervescence um, and show the importance of time by comparing one's own effervescence to bubbles. We're also really excited to have a public art exhibit that you will be able to add to for the Driving Pay Forward campaign. We have some mock driver's licenses where folks will write down um, why they support the Driving Pay Forward campaign for undocumented immigrants here in the state of Pennsylvania so that they can drive without fear. We're adding, what we'll be doing is you'll write a message of support on the mock driver's license and um, one, of, um, one of our volunteers will take a picture of you with a Polaroid camera and then we will add that to the wall um, behind uh, the volunteer. We also have um, some, mess uh, some ways to share your messages to the world um, on paper and uh, a, a megaphone for kids to paint or color in their own message. We also are really happy um, and excited to show you all an old school button making machine um, where you can make some hand held buttons. Um, you'll be able to design a button of your choice and we'll be able to press that for you. Here are six drawings from Shuchita Mishra and these are called Lost and Found in Time and Art. And we're so grateful to Shushita for creating these pieces um, that really speak to the theme of our event. Um, each one is captioned with a different concept, including lost and found, lost in grief and found in nature, lost and found in time and art, um, beautiful line drawings. Each one um, is being auctioned separately, so um, for $25 minimum bid. So please check those out. Uh, next, we have this wall from Nicole Jenkins, and it takes you on a beautiful journey of the experience of sharing the end of life with her mother as she went through breast cancer treatments, which eventually um, ended her life. But, um, you know, having spoken to Nicole about this piece, uh, she's really brought the energy of, you know, not mourning this loss. She says, please don't say you're sorry for my loss. Um, she had an amazing, genuine love, and um, I think together as a society, we can change the way that we mourn death, that we struggle with disease and other issues, um, and how we overcome them, no matter what the outcome. So that is a whole journey of a piece to check out. We have here... Um, Another piece from Jennifer Kong and Deja Massey. Okay, so this beautiful sculpture by Audrey Clayton is called Support and represents the influence of various members of their community studio and other important people in their life. So beautiful work. Above that is a, another Jennifer Kong piece and I love the sort of hazy look of the house in the middle of a field. Next to that is a, a stencil from Stephanie Omer. It's called, Remember What They Look Like. Um, over here, we have a couple more pieces from Jennifer Kong. Um, I like this one at the top. It kind of looks like uh, two creatures sort of holding each other up. 
um, really beautiful. So here we have two works from Daria Karabi. Daria is a former student worker of the Thomas Merton Center and a wonderful artist. Perhaps you've seen some of their design work while they were with the TMC. They are still doing beautiful things. Um, the top one is a paper cutting, which um, is called Get Your Head Out Your Ass. And that is because the Farsi on the piece translates to, by any means, we must live with consciousness, get your head out your ass. The one below it um, is a drawing, and um, you'll see a beautiful flower um, with uh, using felt tip pen, alcohol marker, and ballpoint pen. Um, thank you to Daria for always creating beautiful things for us. Um, and between that, you'll see a poem from Anais Peterson, who is a um, very, very powerful young warrior for the movement here in Pittsburgh and a friend of the Thomas Merton Center. Um, I will not read the poem to you. I encourage you to come and, and check it out. Um, it is quite a powerful piece and it is called, Of Course I Burned Because I Loved You. Okay, this folks at home is our rage space. And this is a really cool interactive exhibit where you can take out all of your frustration at whatever intersections of oppression you may be experiencing, anything that is really just making your body feel like you need to let it out. Um, you're going to take a plate and you are going to write or draw anything on there that, you know, makes you angry, makes you feel powerless, or something that you want to let go of. And what you're going to do is we are going to take all of the safety precautions by wrapping that plate into the, into the pillowcase. You're gonna wear your safety goggles, your face shield, your gloves, and you're gonna take that mallet and just find all of the strength of all of that hurt and pain that you're feeling and take it out on that plate. Um, we, wa we wanted to create this space, not just to get out our rage, but to really question attitudes around property damage, what violence is, whether or not smashing things is cathartic or um, causes more long-term aggressiveness. So we want you to think about all of these questions and we want you to come up with something really meaningful to you to put on that plate and smash it with us. So we hope that you'll give this a try um, if you come by this weekend. The last thing that we're gonna show you on our tour today is the speaker box exhibit. And this is reminiscent of the speaker's corner in Hyde Park in London. Um, and we encourage our guests to come and record yourself uh, for 15 seconds uh, saying anything that you want us to know, um, anything that you need to get out into the world, and just come and speak your truth into the megaphone. You can record it um, and uh, I will demonstrate that for you now. Um, so we are now wrapping up the virtual tour, but in addition to this space here at 5150 Penn Avenue, we will also have the Thomas Merton Center office open across the street uh, at 5129 Penn Avenue. And there we will have even more 
things to enjoy. The uh, office will be open as a reading room with artifacts from Thomas Merton Center history, including new, new people newspapers. Um, we'll have a area where you can have conversations about race. We'll have some anti-racist conversation prompts. And we hope that you'll take some time to sit down and uh, consider those questions with the person that you came with, a stranger, or just uh, write down a response and share it with us anonymously. Um, we will also have a sensory friendly space for anyone who needs a calming oasis, uh, needs to take a little break, feeling a little overstimulated, or uh, it can also be used as a nursing space uh, for nursing parents. Um, our wheelchair accessible restroom is also in the Thomas Merton Center office. So um, as you've seen, there's so much to enjoy here, um, so much to think about, and we are so grateful for you, uh, to you for sharing um, this virtual tour with us. We hope to see you in person as well. And um, thank you to the Aarons family for providing this space, uh, which is also for Lise. And thank you to all of our incredible artists who submitted and came together to collaborate in this museum. And thank you to our sponsors and many, many volunteers uh, who made this magic happen. Um, we are so grateful for all the support for the Thomas Merton Center as we move into another 50 years.